Um, so, Pete, um, I'm just going to go over to you to see if there's any questions from the chat room. Yeah, you're getting a lot of interest, I have oh. to say, Kate. <laughs> okay. You're a star. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know where to start. First off, um, what made you take the leap from actor to producer? Um, for me, I think it's like everything. There's a lot of people wanting to be actors, and I suppose filmmakers or whatever. And I'm one of these people who, if you want something done, you often have to just get out and do it yourself. Um, and I think that's basically what happened. I just sort of was like, I, I want. I was interested in filmmaking anyway, um, and I knew that you know, if I wanted to make it, I was probably going to have to direct it myself and you know, and produce it myself and, and all that stuff. And then it got to a point um, couple, quite a few years in when I went, I'm going to get to the end of this and go, that's exactly the sort of film I want to be in and then haven't acted in it. So we also started writing in a small role that then grew into a bigger role. So <laughs> I was now, now producing, directing, and <laughs> yeah, and sort of second lead type thing. And so, um, but, it, but it is that thing, I think. You don't, you know, it's, you can't just wait for some like Hollywood, Hollywood to call you. It's not going to happen very often. Yeah. So I don't have an acting agent. I don't have anything. So it's, it's if I want to be in this sort of film, then go out and do it. So the message, the takeaway message is, is you know, just create your own opportunities. Yeah. Because opportunity going to. ain't going to come to you. It really isn't, no. I mean, if, if it does, fantastic, you know, great, and, and uh, I'm pleased for you. But but for me, it was, was a yeah. case of, I really want to do this, so... Heck, let's just yeah, try yeah. it, and you just keep going, persevere. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, Pete? Um, yeah, I, I must say, Paula DeSanti is in the chat room. She says hi to you. She hi, was Paula. Your She's the writer. writer. There you go. <laughs> and Richard, one of your actors, says, "Is the alternative comedy ending of Born of Hope ever going to be released to the public?" <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Richard. Yeah, Richard, who played Shacknar, who's he was our main baddie orc, and he he um, randomly turned up. Don't, sorry, don't you just want that on your CV? He was our main baddie hawk. Baddie hawk, I know, I know. Um, and he, we were still filming the film and he'd finished. He came in one day, this is a great story, because he came in, put on his own Shakna mask, put on camo, and he'd brought with him, um, like, army gear. And he'd brought loads of it for other people. And they basically did um, what was called apoc Apocalypse... I can't even say it because it's or Orc. But Apocalypse Now, basically, for Orcs. And they, they did an alternative ending where the Orcs basically take over and shoot everyone. And it is it is quite funny. I mean, it's very, it's very different from Born of Hope, but it is quite funny. And yes, Richard, I will put it on the web. I'm sorry. <laughs> It'll go up. But yes, I'm so sure everyone would love to see that. that can't be Shack on a DVD. in full... Can't, yeah, camo gear. Okay, <laughs> one final question. Yep, uh, Simon says the film looks very slick. How did you fund and fund the shoot and edit? How, how much did it cost, in fact, and how yeah. long did it take, and all of those practical all questions? All those practical questions. Well, the budget was um, just under £25,000, which I started to fund myself, and obviously ran out of money, because I don't own that sort of money. And we basically had to turn to the fans who were watching sort of trailers and stuff and say to them, look, we've, we're not going to be able to finish this film. We've got to do all these big fights and stuff. If you give us a hand by, like, giving us a quid here and there then we can finish it. You know, there's a lot of people watching the trailer. And and basically people just jumped at that and they helped out and they we started to get money in. And over half the budget, actually, was funded by the fans in the end. Right. Um, so, yeah, £25,000 for that. Um, the actual filming, although the six-year period, obviously, from sort of spark to end, actual filming was from July 08 through, and we released in December 09, so actually only about a year and a half to actually film it and release it. Um, and we edited on Final Cut Pro. Uh, we, that was actually Christopher Dane, the lead actor, ended up doing the edit because, again, it's like multiple hats. We were going to do a rough edit ourselves and then try and get a professional editor and ended up just keep going and, and we did it all ourselves. That was his first edit of right. that film. Um, yeah, what was the other... Was there any other questions? Um, but how has it taken off compared to The Hunt for Gollum, which <laughs> got such a lot of press? <laughs> that was from uh, Moments of Film. Um, also, oh, right. the director yes. of the no. <laughs> <laughs> no um, that well, it's it's strange because um, we've got a we had a lot of publicity when it first got released. We didn't have very much publicity, whereas Hunt for Gollum, which actually sparked out of Born of Hope, because um, Chris Bouchard, who did Hunt for Gollum, was actually on board as a composer for Born of Hope, and then went it's a good idea it's quite smartly <laughs> and went I might make a ten minute film about Aragorn, and of course that grew as they do into a much bigger film so we, we helped out each other with with costumes and stuff um but he got i mean he got a huge amount of publicity and 
uh, has had about six million views, I think, on the internet, which is right. quite amazing. Um, it's a short, slightly shorter film; it's about forty minutes. Um, and so we, we aren't quite at six million. We're yeah. aiming for the same. Which yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in well, a constant race. Be there soon. Yeah, we're in a constant race with Hunt for Gollum. But it's taken off very well, and they're, they're quite different films because Hunt for Gollum features Aragorn and characters that you see in the movies, whereas Born of Hope, I wanted it to sit beside the trilogy. Um, and not look out of place in the fact that you know we don't show any characters yeah. you've seen before and stuff. So in theory, you can go that actor is Arathorn, whereas Vigo is Aragorn. And yeah, like yeah. So it wouldn't yeah. be so fan filmy, I suppose. Okay. But yeah. All right. Well, look, we're just getting to the end of the interview. We've got final two questions, which I always ask everybody. Yes. What mistakes did you make? Yes, you've already asked me. You asked for three uh, earlier, didn't you? Did I? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> that, 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 that was takeaway learning oh, things. Oh gosh. This, this is big mistakes. mistakes. Oh, if you, you see, could I, might have, I might have answered, answered that already. What mistakes? Um, well, don't worry if, if you've if, if gosh, you've not again, got any. So, yeah, I mean, my my, mis my mistake. Well, it's, it's weird because like it is that weird thing, isn't it? Though that well, um, mistakes that, aren't sort of like because it hap that it happened and it's all finished. That it's sort of like yes, I definitely could have done loads of things better and differently, but. But, I th but everything did come together, so that's quite good. I don't, I, I can't think offhand what mistakes. Okay, well, let's. let's I mean, plenty. Yeah. I'm not denying that there were plenty of mistakes. Well, it is a film, and you know, a, a film is a litany of cock ups, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, well, final question then. What advice would you offer an emerging filmmaker? Um, I think I've already answered this too in the fact that just get out there and do it. Um, I really think that's key. I mean, I haven't been to film school and I haven't done all that stuff. Um, but I just know that I think the best way to learn is to to go out and do it. I either get yourself on a big production, even just for a short amount of time, so you can see how the big ones work, but go out and do your own as well. Um, and finish them more than anything. I think people like making films and never actually edit them and finish them. That's the other big problem, I think. Mm -hmm. So make them, finish them, whether you like them or not, finish it, shelve it move on, make another one, learn, ask people, talk to people, mm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your extraordinary Middle Earth journey um, <laughs> with us. I think it's, it's, it's I've, I've for a long time believed that, you know, there's a great model out there to let go of the responsibility of trying to make money back and just make a film for the pure love. And that has got to be the best calling card that anybody can make. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, uh, we did Born of Hope kind of as a labour of love, and it was never intended as sort of like path to, to go into filmmaking yeah. but but now it is an amazing great calling yeah. card and stuff so yeah we got the hell of, of sort of going because you can't live mm -hmm. on on no money so now we're like thinking about the whole budget things and you know, it'd be much nicer to not have to sure. worry about that so. yeah okay but, yeah. 